Flash memories are the most practical non-volatile memories. They are used to implement all mass storage devices on modern uh, electronics. The device used with flash memories is this device, and it is a very simple double gate device. The only thing about it is that the oxide thickness is actually kind of small. This allows it to do uh, tunneling with the application of favorable terminal voltages, which allows it to use tunneling through the entire length of the channel to do programming or erasure. And so this is a little bit different from the Flotox device, where tunneling only took place in a spe specific localized location near the drain, and the thickness of the oxide was relatively thick everywhere else. This is because the thickness of oxide used uh, in modern technologies is already thin enough that tunneling under Fowler-Nordheim bending uh, is tenable for erasure and programming. And so this is the device we used. The whole point about flash memories is that we are gonna use a single transistor per cell. And this allows us to have the smallest memories the most dense memories that can be rewritten ever. So this is smaller than all kinds of RAMs, and it is, um, it is very dense because it is just simply the intersection of metal and poly of diffusion and polysilicon lines. Now, the trade-off we have to do here uh, with flash is that flash memories cannot have a cell-by-cell -cell erasure. Th there is no way for you to pick a specific bit and erase it. Instead, you have to erase a whole bunch of cells at once, usually the entire row or the entire column of a certain array. And why that is the case is something we have already started to explore with double EPROMs when we remove the access transistor. Since there's no access transistor with flash memories, there's no way to erase a single cell. Uh, but we can live with this uh, for very practical reasons that we will get into when we discuss NAND flash memories. The other problem with flash memories is that they, they require a lot of monitoring and control. There's a lot of control circuits surrounding them uh, that keep track of what's going on because there's a lot of values that can deviate through usage, specifically the values of threshold voltages. So we have to keep track of threshold voltages. So let's begin by looking at uh, the NOR flash array. So this is a NOR flash array, and it just looks like any uh, regular old NOR ROM, except that there are transistors at every uh, cell. And uh, these transistors are double gate transistors, and we have ground lines. These are not connected to ground, but they're actually marked as ground zero, ground one, and ground two because uh, when programming and erasing, we might connect different terminal voltages to these grounds. But in normal operation, this would operate exactly the same as any NOR ROM, with the ground lines being connected to ground, the word lines being used uh, as word lines derived from the row decoder and the bit lines feeding the column decoder and the sense amplifiers. So reading uh, from the uh, NOR flash memory is exactly the same as reading from a NOR ROM, and the delay calculations are going to be exactly the same as the delay calculations for reading from a ROM. What really matters is how we program and how we erase. So when programming and erasing, we want to examine a bunch of things. First is the terminal voltages we apply. Second is the mechanism used to program or erase the cell, meaning is it avalanche injection, hot carrier effect or Fowler-Nordheim tunneling. And finally, one, when programming, can we program on a bit-by-bit -bit basis and can we erase on a bit-by-bit -bit basis? If you cannot program on a bit-by-bit -bit basis, then this array doesn't work. You have to be able to program on a bit-by-bit -bit basis. If you erase and you find that you are erasing whole sections of the memory, that's actually fine. So let's see how we do programming first. So this is the... Uh, terminal voltages, this is the arrangement we use to program this specific cell. So we apply VPP to the gate of uh, the cell we want to program, to the, so to the word line of the cell we want to program. Uh, grounds are applied normally, so there are zero volts on all the grounds. 
There are zeros on all the word lines that are not being programmed, zeros on all the bit lines that are not being programmed, and a VDD on the bit line that is being programmed. So if we look at this specific transistor, what's happening here is that we have a VDD on the drain, we have a VPP on the gate, and we have a ground on the source. So what's going to happen is that we will have a healthy channel created by VPP. This channel will have electrons that are flowing at a very high speed, probably close to velocity saturation or velocity overshoot levels for the uh, sizes of transistors used in flash, which means that electrons near the uh, drain side are very fast, which means that the hot carrier effect will take place which means that a lot of electrons will be attracted into the floating gate of the storage transistor, allowing it to program into uh, not existing. So we are using hot, the hot carrier effect to program the cell. And the hot carrier effect, as we know, is relatively fast. So we can program relatively fast and uh, relatively harsh to the oxide as well. Now, we have to check that nothing else is happening to, to all the other cells in the array. So uh, all the cells in the, uh, in the first row and in the third row are safe from being programmed or erased. If you are reading from these cells, that's fine. What we don't want to happen is the values stored on these cells to be changed. So we don't want to have, to have any uh, um, possibility that the values will change. If you look at the first row and then on the, uh, at the last row, you will find that all the terminal voltages are very safe. Unless there's a terminal voltage which is VPP, there's no chance that you are doing anything to the cells. VDD and ground are not strong enough to change the contents of the cell. So if we look at the second row, there's actually a problem we have to uh, address here, which is that the uh, this cell, this cell, and this cell, all the other cells in the row, other than the cell being programmed, are observing VPP on their gates, which means that their situation is they have a zero volt on the drain, they have a zero volt on the source, and they have a VPP on the gate. Now, this is a situation which will cause tunneling, and tunneling is going to be from the substrate into the, control, into the storage gate, into the floating gate. So some of these cells are going to program, actually, but it's safe enough meaning that the amount of time it takes to program this specific cell using hot carrier injection is so short that the deviation in the V threshold of all the other cells by tunneling is going to be unnoticeable. But you have to keep track of it, meaning that there has to be a circuit that keeps monitoring how far the threshold voltages of all the cells have deviated from, um, from normal levels, normal for what uh, data they should be storing. Because imagine if you are programming this row, uh, cells in this row, multiple times. Then this means that the cells in this row are exposed to tunneling multiple times, which can add up. Which is why I, I said that flash memories in general are complicated to control. And you have to pay attention to what's happening to other cells in the array. So let's look at how we can erase a specific cell. Here we are, we want to erase this specific cell, meaning this cell contains uh, electrons in the floating gate. We want to attract these electrons back into the substrate. So the terminal voltages applied here will do that because what's going to happen for this specific cell is that we are going to have a VPP on the source. There's going to be a ground on the control gate. And there's going to be an open circuit at the drain, which doesn't really matter. What's going to happen here is that we're going to have a large vertical field, but that vertical field is in a direction that promotes the flow of electrons back down into the substrate. And so we are going to erase this cell by tunneling. The problem here is that all the other cells in the row are also going to observe tunneling, and the tunneling is going to be from the floating gate down into the substrate. And we cannot rely on the same reasoning we used for programming to say that these cell values are safe. Because for programming, we said that hot carrier injection is a much faster process than tunneling, which means that this, the time it takes for the cell to program will not be enough for the other cells to have their threshold voltage 
deviate enough by tunneling. Here, all the cells are tunneling, so we have to wait a long time, and everything in the first row is going to be destroyed. So you have to accept the fact that the first row is going to lose all of its values, which again um, adds to the point of the fact that flash memories have to have controls on the side. What's going to happen here is that if you really insist on only destroying or erasing the value of this specific cell, then you have to have an, a register sitting on the side. It's going to read the contents of the entire row and then erase the row and then rewrite everything except for the cell that you wanted to erase. But the takeaway from this is that it's impossible to erase the, the value of a specific cell in a flash memory.